I'm making another video on doing maintenance on my wife's van. You know, most people watching this video are people who don't have any experience uh, working on cars at all. It's a very simple process. You just gotta have a couple tools. On this particular van, you gotta have a special uh, socket for pulling the oil filter off. This van has an oil filter canister. I'll put a link to it in the description. The van uses zero W20 uh, full synthetic motor oil. Uh, I'll also go over how to reset the uh, maintenance required light at the end. So it's a very simple process. You just gotta have a, a old drain pan, a wrench to take the plug out. I think it's 14 millimeter. I'll clarify that in a minute. And you gotta have the special socket for removing the oil filter canister. And then you gotta have an oil filter and that's it. So there's a few basics you're gonna need for changing your oil. One of them is gonna be a drain pan. Uh, I've had this drain pan for like 25 to 30 years, so it's uh, seen its fair share of use. The good thing about this one, it's got a spout on it. You can drain it back into the bottle when you uh, get done with it and take it to the local uh, waste disposal place. We have here in South Carolina, uh, we have a place we have to take it and pour it. So this is the motor oil I'm using. It's full synthetic, made by Amazon. It's Amazon Basics. I'll put a link to it. And there's the oil filters that are Toyota oil filters. Uh, I don't always use the Toyota brand oil filters, but this time the price was good on them. So uh, I'll put a link to that also. And you see this is just the filter itself. It comes with O-rings uh, so you can replace them. And here's a special socket that I was telling you about. It's got uh, little notches in it that, that latch into the uh, oil filter canister. So and then, like I said, a wrench. I believe it's 14 millimeter, I'll let you know for sure. So then you need a floor jack because these vans sit so low that you can't really, uh, or I can't get up under it without one. And also a jack stand. Uh, it's good to have a set of jack stands, but you don't ever want to be under the car with just the jack holding it up because the jack can fail. So with the jack stands, it's going to be held solid and you're more safe. So underneath the car, here's your oil filter canister. And I usually take it off in one piece. You can take the bottom out and drain it. Uh, and there's the drain plug. You just take the drain plug out and let it drain into the pan. You got to try to center it. I usually take the drain plug out first with my uh, wrench and then I'll slide the pan over to where it also gets underneath the oil filter canister so it catches the drips from both sides. So it is 14 millimeter. So it's righty tighty lefty loosey just like most just like most uh, things are, I break it loose by hand. Sometimes when you're up under a car and looking at a bolt backwards, even if you know righty tighty lefty loosey, it's still easy to try to turn it the wrong direction. So remove the plug and you see the oil is going directly into the pan. Next I'm going to slide the pan over here to where it's underneath the filter also so you can see that you can see my uh, special socket is on the canister and I got my ratchet on there and it's also lefty loosey
Well, vent's not working on my oil pan. I just took the lid off the side and it's draining down correctly now. My vent must have gotten clogged up. I need to poke it out. That's why it was doing that bubbling. You can see now that almost the oil has almost stopped draining back at the plug. I usually let it drain till it gets to pretty much a trickle. I don't really have time to sit around and wait for every last drop to come out of it. I had an uncle who would let his set overnight because he didn't want it to, uh, he didn't want to leave any in there. Thought that was a bit extreme. But basically that's, that's the way that comes out. And you see now why I got the rubber gloves on. You don't have to have them, but it makes it a lot nicer. So this is the old oil filter. It's a Fram. It's a Tough Guard 9972. I'll put a link in there for that too. Uh, so you remove the oil filter like that. Swap out the O-ring, which I've already done that, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. This is the O-ring pick. You can use a small screwdriver if you want to. So you just take it, pull it off like that. This is the new one, so I'm putting it right back on. I did it off camera. Thought I had the camera running and I didn't. So you put it on there. I always coat it with a coat of oil so it helps it not to leak. Then you slide the new Toyota filter in there. And you see the Toyota brand doesn't have the plastic on the top and the bottom like the Fram does. But it's gonna function the same way. All right, and that's all you gotta do for that. And then I just wipe off the outside of the housing like this. So I'm ready to put it back on now. So now you can see the oil is just a small trickle back there. Now I'm going to screw the oil filter back up into its spot there. And on this vehicle, it's in a very good place, so it's not hard to get to. You just jack the car up a little bit. I'm a big guy and I can reach up under there fairly easily. So I put the socket on there. Tighten it down until it snugs. And snug is just a film where it's just barely tight. I mean, not, you don't have to tighten it till you kill yourself, in other words. Now I've got the plug. I'm ready to stick the plug back in. Put it in there. Put the 14 millimeter wrench. Tighten it up snug again. And there we go. No oil on the driveway. No real oil on me. Okay, so under the hood here, we've got a couple things that we care about. We care about the dipstick, which we just emptied all the oil out of the engine. So pull it out, clean it out. And there's two notches on here, low, it, your oil level has to be in between these two notches. I always try to put it closer to the top when I first start off. But anyway, we'll check that after we get done adding the oil. And then the cap is screwed on right here. Pull it off. It says SAE0W20 right on it. So you know that that's the right type of oil to use. Uh, the way this is set up, they make it kind of difficult for a funnel. But I always try to use a funnel so I don't pour all over the engine. So I know from past experience, this engine uses six quarts of oil. I'm not gonna fill it up to six, but I'm gonna empty my five quart jug into the, uh, I'm gonna empty it into the engine first. See how it's gurgling? You can turn your bottle sideways and stop that. Open it all the way open, which I don't. If you turn the bottle sideways, it doesn't gurgle. See the difference? Like I said, I know it takes six quarts. So what I do is put five in there and then start the engine up. The reason you start it up is it allows the oil to go into the oil filter. And that way when you check your level, 
you know that you're reading the correct level. You check it right now before you do that. You, the, the oil has to be pumped into the oil filter housing. So right now, if you check it, you would not get a correct reading because the oil filter housing is empty. Once you start it, it'll push, it'll fill up the oil filter housing. So pull the funnel off. Put the cap on. It's going to be about a quart low. It's okay for it to be a quart low while we're working on it. What I do is let it run until the oil light goes off. The oil light's gonna be on as soon as you turn it on because the engine detects that there's no oil in certain parts of the engine. It takes a second for it to pump through the engine. The reason there's no oil in it is because we drained it. So now what we're gonna do is lift, pull out the dipstick. We're gonna clean it. We're gonna put it back in. All right, now we're pulling it out and we're looking at it. And this is barely registering on here, so I know that, I don't know if you can see it good, it's barely a little bit on the bottom of the dipstick, so I know I need more. So on this car, you always got to keep extra, because it's always going to take six ports. So I have some left from my last oil change. I'm gonna put a, approximately a quart in there and then I'm gonna stop. Cause you, what you don't want is to overfill your engine with oil. So that's a bad thing to do. It can cause problems. So you give it a minute to go down, clean the dipstick again, put it in, pull it out. Now I'm a little further up, but I'm still not far, far enough. I'm closer to the bottom dot. So I'm gonna put about another half a quart or so in there. The first time I did not put a full quart. I'm just kind of doing it. There's no good way of measuring it when you have a, a big bottle like I have. So give it a minute, pull it out, clean the dipstick, stick it back down in there, pull it out. You got to stick it all the way to the bottom. So now I'm, at, I'm a little above the bottom mark, so I'm going to put about another half a quart. In total, it, I think it, I think the manual says it takes six quarts. So if I had six quarts, it would probably bring it to the right amount. If I had it in a quart jar where I could check it. So now, I'm gonna check it. This may be the last time. Yep, now I'm right below the top dot, which is exactly where I want it. So that's gonna be all I need to do. So put it back down in there. Pull the funnel out, put the cap in. Don't ever forget to put the cap in. Everything's back in place. So now we've got one more thing left to do and that's to reset the maintenance required light. I've changed the oil on this car ever since we've had it for about the last 60,000 miles. The maintenance required light will come on and remind you that you need to do an oil change. So when you start it up, You got this little uh, triangle down here in the bottom corner and a maintenance required light flashing. And it also pops up here when I first started it. In order to reset the maintenance required light, you get it on trip A and then there's a knob here and you push and hold it. You leave it on trip A 
and then you turn off the car and then you turn it back you push the button twice to turn it back on and it's gonna that's gonna pop up saying reset and maintenance data so now it's complete and that's what you got to do and also reset my trip odometer but anyway that's all you got to do to reset it so now it's back to uh back to new again and it'll it'll start the uh countdown for the next oil change anyway i hope this helps somebody out somebody who hasn't changed it before it's very, very fairly simple to do probably takes about 20 minutes total thank you very much please like and subscribe comment if you have any questions